There's always a bit of a war going on the bench here between 8-pin microcontrollers. I was talking to Atul Ravi the other day, and he asked me, how come I've moved sort of towards these Paduk uh, microcontrollers as opposed to the A2013? So I thought, well, I'd line up a few specs here and just um, have a quick look. And, uh, and not just historically what's been going on, but also maybe what the future is. So the A2013, multi-time programmer, one kilobyte of flash, 64 bits of uh, SRAM, 8 megahertz nominally, but most people run it around 1. I've run it down to 128 kilohertz, and I do that to save uh, on power. You can run them down to probably 3-ish volts as well. So if you're running at 128 kilohertz and 3 volts, uh, the A2013 is not using an awful lot of grunt. So these are typically for, like, solar uh, projects. PWM-wise, there are two channels at 8-bit. And there's a 10-bit ADC. Pretty useful guy. And I've done a lot of work uh, with this uh, microcontroller in particular. And I'd have to say that one of the things which I really enjoyed was programming this in assembler. Uh, and in fact, wrote a, uh, a bit of a, a book about that too, which I'll link in the description if you are interested. Along comes the, uh, the famous three cent um, microcontroller, which is this one here. Uh, so many videos and blogs on this. Uh, I fell down that rabbit hole as well, even to the point where I um, had to make a program, and this is an open source programmer for the Paduks. took me a long time, a whole series of videos on that, which many of you have uh, have seen and commented on, but that is a working open source um, free PDK Paduk programmer and works fine, and there are lots of variations on that as well. The limitation with the PMS150C is the uh, PWM, which is only one channel at 8-bit. And also it's one-time program or OTP. So uh, if you get it wrong, bad luck. Other than that, pretty similar to the A2013. Uh, the big distinction here is that I can squeeze this one down to 15 kilohertz. That is positively anemic. And also the voltage goes down a bit lower as well. It's not unusual to run this below 3 volts at 15 kilohertz. It's using nothing. It's existing on the air. So this is very, very good. If you've got one project in mind and it's only doing one thing and uh, you just want something which is cheap and reliable and easy to use, the PMS150C, no problem. Next step up for me is the PFS154 multi-time programmer, a little bit more flash RAM, so from one kilobyte to two kilobyte, and that has been useful with some of the projects that I've done. Uh, a little bit more SRAM. Again, you can squeeze it down to 15 kilohertz. That's good. The real big hit for me, though, is two PWM channels at 8-bit and three PWM channels at 11-bit. So this has been my mainstay for a while, particularly on the Candle project. Uh, very, very useful for that, and I've done a lot of work on, on that, and it's been fine. However, a couple of projects recently, as I was talking to Artul about, uh, a couple of projects recently have required an analog-to-digital converter. 10-bit on the A2013, not existent on the PMS 150C. Unfortunately, um, and it kills me every time that I realise this, it's not available on the PFS 154. It only kills me because I've <laughs> went and bought quite a lot of these, and I, I probably should have checked, but there is no ADC on that. So the next step up is the PFS 173, multi-time programmer, three kilobytes of flash this time, uh, 256 bytes of SRAM, so you know, increasing in power, and we've got, again, the ability to squeeze down to 15 kilohertz. Again, the two PWM channels at 8-bit and three PWM channels at 11-bit. But, and here's the kicker, a 14-bit ADC. So I think I'm going to probably start to move towards uh, this one here. I've never programmed this. I'm, to my um, best of my uh, recollection, I don't think I've even made it blink. So this is going to be a short video. We know these guys work well. We've seen them many times before. But I'm going to um, pop this one into the uh, the program and see if I can get it to blink. And then that will be the start of that journey, as usual. Uh, hello, world, <laughs> for microcontrollers. And what's this guy doing sitting out here? This is the CH32V003. I'll put the uh, I'll put the specs up here so you can see how um, just how lovely it is in comparison to the uh, the others. I think this is probably the future I'm going into. 
have not also, um, or I think I, maybe I have programmed this once. If, if I have, I'll, I'll link the video up. Um, you do need special programmers. The data sheets are a little difficult at this stage, but uh, such a lovely chip. Eight pin again, but the power in this one is, um, is amazing. Okay, let's get the uh, 173 to blink and then we'll, uh, we'll call that a day. Two PFS173 chips. One is just doing a little bit of blinky and some PWM action coming out of, well, actually going into uh, PA4 and PA3 respectively because these chips sync current, not source it. So you can see it coming out of, um, well, this is 3.8 volts just separately. I've just got this running from a supercapacitor, um, 250 farads sitting on the back there. Separate experiment. Don't worry about it, but that's where the power is coming from. So coming into the LED out through a 2K resistor and back to the chip and just, yeah, just gently ramping up and down PWM. The other uh, chip here, which I'll put in, actually has some code on it to link the ADC to the PWM. So let me just pop that in. Uh, and so what that's doing is that this pot here uh, is like a voltage divider and it's been picked up by PA0. That's the yellow wire snaking around there. And if I wind this back, you can see the PWM winds back. And if I increase it, then the PWM increases. So that's the ADC linked to the PWM, which has been yeah, missing, I think, in some of the online examples and uh, seems to have been done okay. I mean, I'm not proud of the code in that there's no interrupts used here. This thing's just galloping along at 100 kilohertz and uh, and sampling as it goes through the loop to see if this pot has been changed. Um, and it's also um, just counting basically to uh, to find out when I, you know when it should blink as opposed to uh, doing some sort of timing interrupt. So that's yeah, future work for me to figure that out. But in the meantime, I'm going to call out the circuit working for this week. All the code is on the blog. See you next time.